Gloria Loring is also a successful recording artist and the mother of pop star Robin Thicke. In her new book, Coincidence is God's Way of Remaining Anonymous, we learn the life-changing role that coincidence has played in Loring's life and how it led to the revelation and healing of a deep, dark secret. And Gloria Loring is with me now. Gloria, I think people are going to feel very privileged to have to hear this story because it's something that I think maybe you know, I certainly know, affects so many millions of people, particularly women. Yes. What happened? Yes. I was three years old. Um, <clears throat> I've never actually, I've written it, but I've never actually told it out loud. So here we go. If Bear you, with me, if folks. Hold hands if you like. <laughs> Bless your heart. That's why you're so good at what you do. I was three years old, and I was awakened by the crushing weight of my father, um, who was drunk, on top of me. Um, I, in re-experiencing this quite later in life, felt my shoulder go numb, the side of my face go numb. I could smell the stale, sickening smell of old alcohol. You know, when somebody drinks every day, the alcohol just comes out of their that, pores. That acetone smell. Yeah, that terrible smell. Uh, my hip went numb. He was in a state of arousal. Um, it kind of fractured me in that moment. Um, a part of me broke off and just tried to escape. You know, just you, you, you separate. Parts of yourself just get shut off because you're no longer safe in the world. I remember when I, I heard about all those young men with Sandusky and I just, it just hurt my heart so much because I just thought, you know, I know how it is to go through your life and never feel safe in your own body. That is... That is a line that once it's crossed is so hard to repair. I remember I went to a retreat once and they said, well, what would you like to get out of this weekend? And I said, I'd like to feel safe. I didn't even know I'd been sexually abused at that point. And two women came up and said, is your dad an alcoholic or something like that? And I said, they could sense it. Yeah. And they said, hmm, you think something happened? And I said, yeah, maybe. And they said, yeah, when you were used the word safe, we know what that's about. So well, I think there's so many of us. Well, you're describing something specific that happens to very young sexual abuse yes. survivors because their body becomes the source of the distress. And so yes. the body becomes dangerous and painful. And a lot of people with chronic pain have experienced this because the body then is disconnected from your self, from your brain. Yes. And in order for it to tell its tale of woe, it can only do it through primitive means like pain, and numbness and dissociation and and uh, sometimes uncontrollable rages um, uncontrollable uncontrollable crying grief that would just pour I mean I'd hide sometimes I'd hide in a closet and just sob and I didn't want anybody to see because I thought what am I losing my mind is something wrong with me and I didn't know where it was coming from I just knew that there was a sort of low-grade agitation in my life and I was always waiting for something to go wrong and that's why I was such a perfectionist about everything. I was all, you know, you put on the mask and people say, well, how could you be so vulnerable off stage? Well, when I was on stage, I was the Gloria. I was, you know, I Protective. had the mask. I was off stage. I was a very different person. And it's that discovering how you can bring yourself back into your wholeness. Yes. That is a long process. It yes. doesn't happen overnight. It's rewiring your brain. Yeah. It's bringing, oh, you say it's it shattered. That's literally biologically what happens, and you have to oh. rewire it all back together again. That's what it felt like in that moment, as if parts of me just flung off into the universe, and I was left like unconscious in some ways. The other thing that happens is kids that go through that become good victims later. Was there yes. other victimization, or did you repeat the traumas in any way? I, I, now that I look back, you know, <laughs> from the standpoint of being a mom, etc., I see how if I had had a young girl, I would, oh my God, the situations I put myself into. Fortunately, most of the time I escaped, but I would go places with, with men or people I didn't know. One time it turned out not very well. Um, this fellow had been drinking. I didn't smell it, you see, because it was familiar to me, so I was attracted to it. And he kept showing pictures of his fiance, and he said, come on, just come up to my room with me for a minute. I'm going to get my jacket, and we'll go out and join the others. He jumped on me in his room. I, I, I my, so yeah, it was like it was a, it was going to be a rape, but I fought him off, and I, I was so traumatized, and I fought, and I had bruises and mascara running, and oh. I was so, I was so ashamed that I couldn't tell anyone. I thought it was all my fault. You see, this is the thing that, you know, we take the shame on ourselves, and the shame colors everything we do. Well, it's shame is, a, is an outcome for sure and low self-esteem from these kinds of experiences. But it's interesting, the, the raucous, as you told me during the break conversation we had before, was blaming women for things that were happening to them. Somebody that's been through what you've been through would 
of course, take that all on and feel it was your responsibility. Yeah, we got to put down the blame thrower, as my friend says. Step yeah. away from the blame thrower. Responsibility is a different thing. Yep. Once we start to see that we keep attracting certain kinds of very difficult relationships, um, very difficult people, difficult circumstances, if we can wake up and say, why am I doing this to myself? Instead of blaming and shaming, because we've already had enough Don't of that. Don't blame the world. You're the only constant in it, so take it. You're the full Figure crumb. out where it happens. <laughs> Let yeah. me quickly, if I can go to Maria very quick, let's hear her yeah. question, and, and then we will uh, go ahead and take a break. Maria, go ahead. Yes, um, I completely identify with Gloria. My father raised me when I was four years old. Mm. Oh. And for children, um, your parents are supposed to be your protectors. They're supposed to be the ones that teach you about future relationships. So it kind of breaks you in... You struggle to go through life trying to find that normal relationship. There is none of that. I have even what they call body memory. Yes. I felt it. Yeah, I feel that's... it in my body. Yes. It completely, I have been through this. It's going to be 40 years, mm. 40 years, but I'm still trying to find my path through therapy. But that is to a child. The child, children are never supposed to think of adults. And, and Maria, your, your point about them, people somehow think that there's got to be an explicit memory, you know, like a visual memory of what happened. No, it's, it's the imprint it leaves on your body and nervous system. Yes, the smell. See, as, as some, my, my therapist explained to me, you may not have the cognitive or the language skills, mm -hmm. but you have the senses, you have the smell, you have the taste, you have the touch. Parts of my body going up, going numb. I didn't make that up. Right. I can't make that up. That's I can't right. even do that as an actress. Right. You know, I can't even make parts of my body go numb. All right, we're